Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. BKNX, and I am joined by... Admin Cliffjumper. And Admin BH. And we are here to review Episode 4 of Avatar The Last Airbender, The Warriors of Kyoshi. Now the first three episodes are like this really good introduction to the series and the season. Well, Episode 4, I feel, is like our first regular... The Gang Visits an Earth Kingdom Town episode. That sort of sets the tone for what a lot of the episodes of Book 1 are going to be like. What did you guys think of the episode? I, um, you know, I'm a broken record. I usually say this all the time, but I think this episode is really great. (laughs) Um, It's, I love that it has, like, these little arcs, like Sokka, um... He's, like, really sexist, and he's, he's like, holding too much on to man- masculinity and everything. And I love that that's resolved in this episode. Like, you, we meet Suki, and he's just kind of, like... Um, like, I feel bad for him, too, because, like, he's so... Like, there's sort of an innocence about him. Like, he's just kind of an idiot <laughs> in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, like, when he's just like, that does it! And he goes to, like punch Suki, <laughs> and then, like, he gets destroyed. Like, I, I feel bad for him, but, like, it's like, dude, come on. Um, but, like, it, it resolves very quickly, and I love that, because it makes Sokka a lot more likable, and um, I love that it basically, you know, in the first few episodes, it sets up his arc already, like, he's, his goal is to become a great warrior and a great leader. Um, and this episode, like, drives that home even more, even more, like, he's getting... He's getting training and, like, he's getting advice from a different source than you normally wouldn't uh, expect. And I love that Aang, um, going on to that, I love that um, he, this is the first time, like, we really see him accept his responsibility. I mean, like, we already saw it before in, like, episode two at the very end where he's just like, we could learn waterbending together and, like, he accepted it right there, but this is the first time where you see him, like, goofing off and there's some serious consequences. And at the very end, he's just like, no, you know what? I'm going to help out. And he just, he puts the fires out with the Yunagi. And I love that it foreshadows uh, Katara's, um, her, like, jealousy in a way. Like, it's really subtle in this episode, but, like, she's kind of jealous of Aang, um, maybe getting all that attention, but she's also rightfully annoyed because, like, Aang's being, like, really immature and stuff. But I like that it's kind of, like, a super subtle hint that in the future she's going to be kind of, like, jealous with her waterbending being inadequate compared to Aang's and stuff like that. And that's just something the show does really well. Like, it, it'll it interject something in there that seemingly pertains to just that one episode, but it actually pertains to the arc of the characters that happen much later on. And uh, the animation in this episode is really good, too. Um, There's, like, some really... There's, like, a really cool little detail. Like, in the beginning of the episode, Sokka um, had a rip in his pants, and, like, Katara was, like, so... And, like, later in the episode, when Sokka's trying to show off in front of Suki and the other Kyoshi warriors, um... He, like, bows down to, like, stretch, and you can actually see the rip in his pants. Like, it's <laughs> it's really cool that that's actually yeah. there. I was like, oh, well, continuity. <laughs> yeah, but, One thing, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things I could say about the animation, because, like, I could but a lot of the key animation done here was done by, like, my favorite animator. His name is Ki-Hun Ryu. Um, I could tell his style, and, like, it, there's just some really great stuff in here. That's all I have to say for now. I'll probably think about the things. <laughs> yeah. One thing, it's nice that um, his sexism is never portrayed as, like, malicious or anything. It's yeah. just sort of ignorant. And you can understand where he came to that, being that, like, most of the women he's known in his life aren't exactly warriors. And from him, like, the warriors are the men that left his tribe to go fight in the war. And exactly. the women yeah. quite literally stayed home to take care of kids. It's it's just him projecting his own situation across other people. And yeah. I like how, uh, you know, he quickly gets like he's shown up and then he realizes, oh, well that's not accurate. Women can be great fighters. 
And I also like uh, Suki's line towards the end that I I am a warrior, but I'm a girl too. That it's not like it's not yeah. a mutually exclusive. It's not black and white. Yeah, it's yeah. you can have mix of like stereotypically feminine and masculine mm. aspects. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with both Cliff Jumper and uh, Mr. B Cannon X. It's just a really solid fourth episode. Um, it kind of it kind of deviates from the first three, and the first three kind of act as like you know like a movie in a sense. This one is like the first, I think, as BK and X said before, it like acts like as the first like book one water, like you know like we're going to like Earth Kingdom Town, and this is what we're gonna do sort of episode. So it's just a really fun uh, episode. Like it's just has some really funny parts to it. Um, I love the joke where um, Sokka is, you know, is in the training room and then Aang walks by and is like, oh, hey, Sokka, nice dress. <laughs> it just cracks me up. Oh, and uh, yeah. something about <clears throat> that I really, really like, and I know it's like a really subtle thing, is that there, I think there's like a fish um, in the, at like the market on Kyoshi Island, and you can actually see it like being transported to like Zuko's Oh my god, ship, that was the like, fish! Like over time, so once it gets to his boat, you kind of, and it get, the story is told like with the fish, so I find that so cool. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, transition. the transition. The transition, yeah, transition between those is just awesome. It's, yeah, so that's what I would say. It's, I, <laughs> it's really, really yeah, cool. Yeah, I do like that. Um, it, it shows that even with these smaller episodes, they can throw in like these like clever, just just clever little really, special things that make it stand out above like what a lot of other shows would do with a plot like this. And even with the um the serpent the um the uh y- Yunagi um you you see it like spitting water before the final scene and I feel like like most shows would just have him be like be able to do it at like the very end where as in mm. like an avatar it's like foreshadow. He yeah, does yeah, it in like the middle. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's set up. Yeah, it's, so, it's a writing technique. It's just yeah, it's just exactly. Well, it's interesting. It's, if you haven't like, gone in the third act, you set it up in the first. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it's interesting that we sort of see the creature at three moments. Really, we see it at the very beginning of the episode, mm-hmm. partially after he's lighting like the one clay right. fish or whatever, and then that scares the fish away, and he has to like <laughs> run to shore. And then we see it partway through the episode where he's trying to show off to the girls. It attacks him, and then that's where the Fire Nation comes, and that's where we see like the certain the Yunagi in its full glory and it sprays the water and we see that like right as the Fire Nation also comes so it's just like this this click of water and yeah. fire and then oh, towards the end of the um, episode he dives into the water which is a really badass shot and he just sick, pulls yeah. up and he's like sprays yeah, look how small he is he just goes in <laughs> that's small that's cool um, um I have to say something like you just kind of like you were basically just talking about how, like, the Yunagi arrives or whatever. Um, something really subtle, and I love it to death. <laughs> like, I, I'm just a big fan of subtlety in the show, and they do it so well. Is I love that when the Fire Nation arrives, the Yunagi leaves, and they have that mm-hmm. shot of it in, like, towards the camera. And I know there's not a camera, but, like, it's... Like, the yeah. Yunagi's, like, in full frame, and then in the far shot, you can see... Uh, the ship, like, uh, being beached. And, like, I love that because every time, and you'll see this later in the show, every time the Fire Nation is has anything to do with nature, like, there's usual burnt trees. There's, like, it's oh, basically, yeah. like, anti-nature. Like, the Fire Nation yeah. is very anti-nature. Yeah, like, they burn like... things. And even something as ferocious as the Unagi leaves when the yeah. Fire Nation arrives. I love that. It's, it's really yeah. great. And it, you could also tie, like, the ending into, you know, Aang's whole being one with, like, the natural world in, like, a sense where yeah, yeah. nature does help. Even though it's not, like, in, like, intentional helping Aang, it's def- it's it's helping him put out the fire. He has that touch. That touch with nature. And it's, like, the Air Nomad sort of thing where, like, yeah, so, like, Fire Nation, the spirits and, like, animals, like, run away and with, with Aang, they're, he's kind of, like, calling, they're kind of, like, calling to him or he's calling to them. In a sense, so yeah, just, it's, yeah, it's a really good episode. Um, it's it's really what I think sets, like I said earlier, like it, it sets Ang's arc of like, yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna accept my responsibility, and it it really gets the the wheels moving. 
like even more than like the other episodes. Yeah, yeah. No, I know you mentioned this before, but still, like that scene where it's like it, the the full impact really hits him that like these people's towns are destroyed. They're well, their houses are burnt. They're under attack because of me because I let that. Oh, I love that shot. Yeah, he stayed that long, and it just yeah. You know, the full res- he he sort of accepted that. Oh, I'm the Avatar, but now he accepts like the full responsibility of this means we're going to be hunted and. Me staying here has put these people in danger. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's so, so important that he he just found out how important he was. Like mm-hmm. the gravity and weight of who he is hit him in this episode. Mm-hmm. That's basically all I have to say, yeah, other than like, like the fact that I mean, the yeah. animation's like really good in some parts. Like there's there's one scene. Um, I'm trying to think what it was. Oh, there's, there's like a scene in the beginning of the episode that's like inspired by an anime called Fully Coley. And that's one of Brian Kitsuko's <laughs> favorite, uh, animes that partially inspired some of the art in the show. It's when Aang's running on the water and it's like really weird in its <laughs> art design and like, it's like really gelatinous. Like, that, that moment's inspired by Fully Cooley, and I think, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, if I were making a show, and I, I would definitely try to put some Avatar references yeah. in there, so, so it's neat. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. One, I know we mentioned the humor before, but one scene that I always found very funny that I gotta mention is the scene where he's... Uh, getting an artist to paint a picture of him and a girl, and then, like, <laughs> yeah. all the girls keep jumping in, and the artist just gets more frustrated, and I love, like, he's not even silent, he's, like, muttering these little things the whole time, oh, yeah. and then he just gets so frustrated, he, yeah. <laughs> he just gets so frustrated, he walks away, and I'm just like, <laughs> it's, it's funny, and also, it it's, funny. Cool yeah. to, it's cool to see, like, more of, like, that there is... The impact of past avatars have had on certain communities. Like this is this is an island yeah. literally named after Kyoshi with Kyoshi warriors, and it just shows like what an impact a great avatar can have on the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also set up for later when we actually see Kyoshi Island being created. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So, any any other stuff you guys got to say about this episode? Uh, not really. I mean, like, I could talk uh-huh. about small details forever, but, I mean, I think, I think no real point. I think we've mostly covered it. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a really good, uh, first episode to sort of introduce us to the normal format of, you know, the Visiting the Town, Earth Kingdom episodes in book one, and it does, you know, it's really funny, it does a good thing with Sokka, it introduces Suki, and it does a good thing with Aang, like, realizing his responsibility and his importance. It's just a really good episode. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and make sure to like, subscribe, go to my face, go to the Avatar 1 Facebook page and Facebook group and Discord and all that nonsense, and come back next time for episode 5. See ya.